So today I've got a Cole Morgan motor with the BIS-C encoder. It also has sine cosine. Um, we're going to learn how to tune the velocity loop based on the feedback device. Um, we're going to use a BEL. We've got the uh, USB to RJ11 serial adapter connected so that we can um, communicate with the drive. Uh, we could use an Ethernet port from CME2. That would be a little bit faster. So hook up the Ethernet cable, just dedicate it for motion. I got the stow connector here, motor power, feedback. I connected the shield uh, to pin one, which is connected to the frame, and we've got earth connected at the frame. And I'm just using a 24 volt supply to do some basic tuning. I'm not going to go very fast with this motor. This is actually you know, a higher voltage motor, so 24 volts isn't going to be very fast. So to get started, we need to take a look at the specification for the motor. Uh, the motor data is a good place to start. Um, I've got an AKM motor here, size 2-2-3-E-A-N-N-A-A-0-0. So if I look up the part number, I can find the winding data um, in this manual. Uh, I see that it's a BIS single turn absolute. Um, if I look at the connector I had, I can see it also has A, A naught, B, B naught, which is actually sine cosine with the clock and the data. I got a plus five and a sense plus, a ground and a sense minus. I'm just going to connect the sense plus to, to five and the sense minus to ground. So two wires down the cable gives me less IR drop down the cable. Um, on my connector, I didn't have a white black. I had a white green uh, for the ground. By process of elimination, we determined that. So manuals aren't always entirely accurate, um, but it's a good place to look at for a reference. Um, you can see here in this, this connector, uh, the military style round connector, you can see that there is a white green for ground, so it, it makes sense that they would use that cable. Um, one problem I had was the resolution. And we can see they claim 27 bits, but that's interpolated sine cosine. Um, it's really, uh, they say 24 bits, but Five bits are used for alignment, so it's actually nine bits. I got 524,288 counts per rev, so it's really 19 uh, bits of resolution with five bits. Um, that adds up to 24. Yeah, there's multi turn feedback devices with 4096 multi turn. The rest would be left for counts. Um, it's a little confusing here with all these options for feedback, but uh, multi-turn AB, single, single turn AA, there's a DA for NDAT. Um, that's 2.1 would have sine cosine. So this data sheet seems a little old. Um, this BIS turned out to be BIS B. Maybe someday they'll go to BIS C. This NDAT 2.1, maybe someday they'll go to 2.2. So we can't always rely on old data sheets. Um, but you can see the resolution of the sine cosine is 2048 line. That's a good bit of information. And there's a bunch of winding data in here, too, that we can look up. Um, there's a, a resolver feedback device, too. So today I'm going to use the BEL because it has the, the BIS capability. Uh, when we wire the BIS, we have a clock and data so the data goes on SS naught and the, the clock goes on XX naught uh, on the drive. We can see the pins for that. Um, my encoder has a sine cosine so I wired that also for sine plus sine minus for A, A naught and then cosine plus cosine minus for B, B naught with the course with, with respect to zero volts and plus five and there's a shield. You know, make sure the shield finds a path to earth. I'm going to recommend connecting it to pin one on the copy for the frame ground. So when we're selecting the BIS, we just pull, pull it in the list. If we want to do the sine cosine, there's the option for that. But we'll just use the BIS today, absolute. 
19 bits of absolute information for a single turn is plenty. And we can emulate the encoder out. Uh, here's the Colmorgan motor data, which I used to calculate. But the encoder is 19 bits with five alignment bits. That's, that's 24. So really 19 bits of counts per rev and five bits just for alignment. It's a bis B. This one's not a bis C. Uh, it's a single turn. A multi-turn would be 4096. Um, I leave it in servo loop, not current loop, because I'm doing position mode, so not at a faster rate than the position mode. And the 4 megahertz, uh, these are the, the default settings there. So I take this data and I calculate the initial tuning parameters. The goal today is to tune the velocity loop, but I need to make sure my bandwidth has about a kilohertz of current loop. Uh, about a kilohertz of bandwidth, so plus or minus a couple hundred hertz is fine. I'm not going to go crazy fast like a spindle. Lots of poles and crazy fast needs a higher current loop bandwidth. Um, but this should be plenty to have a good stiff velocity loop. Uh, the current limits are set by the drive. Uh, they're actually calculated and entered in here, but we can't do more than three amps with this drive, so that's why it's limited. So I'm going to check the phasing. I've got an invert. I can change the motor direction. And that's proper phasing. I'll say OK. And we'll check the velocity parameters here. 7,000 RPM. These gains might be a little bit low for starters, so uh, we'll, we'll crank them up when we tune. So just for example, auto setup checkbox, comply to the current. This is what the current loop tuning looks like. Um, these values, that's pretty good. Gave us 900 hertz of current loop bandwidth. Uh, we can tune the velocity loop. Uh, we want to make sure that the X cell and D cell values are not too high. And I might bring that speed back down a little bit. So auto setup checkbox, slightly slower speed, bang, bang, back and forth. That looks pretty good. Um, we're cutting it a little close for the velocity. We may want to slow this down a little bit. If we have a don't have a trap, then we'll start to walk. And uh, that's difficult for tuning. So I just want to go back and forth here. So change the frequency and amplitude. Next cell rate should give us a little better fit. Uh, on the gains tab, we can increase the gain. I double it until I break into oscillations. And once I find the point of oscillations, I cut it in half. Um, never set the gain that high because you'll get wild and uncontrollable oscillations. Um, an interesting note about the output filter, it's a two pole at 200 hertz. So when our gain is uh, too high, uh, we get maximum stiffness, but there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of oscillation there. So what I did is I moved the pole out by making it a single pole rather than two poles. That's bought me some phase margin. So this, this value is not oscillating. You can hear a different frequency because the pole location moved a bit. Um, so we've gone from unstable to stable by doubling the, the, the gain and then cutting it in half. Um, I'm going to try to see what too much integral gain is. If I have some inertia, that would be, you know, lower integral gain. But at this time, I have no inertia connected. But when the integral gain is too high, yes, you get good steady state control, but you get overshoot. So there's a little bit of wind up here. That's some unnecessary wind up. Um, I'll bring it back down. We'll take a look at this velocity loop gain of the integral uh, when we tune the position loop. Um, Another thing we can look at while we're tuning the velocity loop is the amount of current that we use. So if we're voltage limited or current limited because of voltage 
limits or uh, current limits, and we'll see the, the limits in the, um, yeah, so that's a little high interval, but we'll, we'll see limits, uh, but we're only using a small amount of current for this, so that's fine. Catch the load, the story may be different. So a single rev is going to be 524288 eight counts per rev, auto setup checkbox. Four, two, eight. Trajectory, we can't go that fast. Uh, so we're going to slow it down. 500 RPM. There's some wicked XL and D cell. So let's make this move. And we'll look at the current while we do that. We can also look at the voltage bus and voltage terminal servo. But the point here is to try to dial in the velocity loop gain. And I can see that I have an inter integral wind up after the move that extends my settling time, so my integral is too high. If my integral was too low, I'd have a uh, constant steady state error. And um, so my error is about 100 counts. So we'll try cutting the integral in half from the previous tuning and see what our steady state looks like. Still takes a little longer to get there, so maybe a little bit more. As your inertia increases, you can decrease the uh, integral gain. Um, what, you, what you're shooting for is a nice settling time to slide right in. Um, and as I don't have and inertia, I can get some wicked good tuning here. Um, but the goal with the large inertia still is to um, get sufficient settling and uh, maximum stiffness in your velocity loop. And again, you know, if the if the VP value is too high, we'll break into oscillations. But sometimes we can move the pole out a little bit and start to get a little bit more uh, gain in the velocity loop uh, without breaking into oscillation. So some systems don't have mechanical resonances until you get further out. Um, that's a, a wicked high velocity loop bandwidth. This will shake any mechanical resonances that you have that are 200 hertz, but you know this is allowing us to get a higher stiffness in the velocity. There it is again. So you have to be careful. If the gain's too high, you'll break into oscillations, and it shows up really nicely in, in the current in the current loop. So it's still a little buzzy. We can see a ring there. I'm going to cut it down a little bit more. Uh, when we stop hard, we get a, a ring out of it. And that's a little more uh, damped. It's stiff, uh, but it's still not oscillating. It's uh, marginally stable, so that's good. And uh, when we're done with the tuning and, and adjustments of the gains, we have to save the flash. Uh, if you like this file, you should save uh, a CCX file so that you can load it into another drive. Um, so this is my Cole Morgan. And it's BIS B, actually. So we'll just save that as BIS B. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's tuning the velocity loop. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.